Greetings my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Traditionalist Crusader here and on today's video I am going to tell you about Holy Week and how you can make it a memorable one. First off, what is Holy Week? Well Holy Week is the most solemn week of the Christian year. It is the seven days of journeying through Jesus Christ when he walked the earth, from his arrival into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday to his glorious resurrection on Easter Sunday. Let's start off with Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the day we commemorate Christ's triumphant arrival in Jerusalem to the cheers of the crowd. The clergy will often use the two Palm Sunday stories to help the faithful think about the strength of their own commitment to our faith. They might ask the faithful to think about all those times that they have been unfaithful and disobedient to Christ or have been hypocritical in proclaiming their support. In many churches during Palm Sunday services, Large palm branches are carried in processions. In the Anglican and Roman Catholic churches, members of the congregation hold small crosses made from palm leaves, both to remember the palm leaves which the people of Jerusalem waved when Jesus arrived and to remember the cross on which he was crucified on. Some faithful display the crosses from their service in their homes during their year as a symbol of the faith. The crosses are then taken back to the church and are burned at the start of next year's Lent to provide the ashes for Ash Wednesday. Hymns for Palm Sunday generally include Ride on, ride on in majesty, and all glory, loud and honour. In some Church of England parishes, songs may include Make Way, Hosanna, and for children, We Have a King Who Rides a Donkey. The next one is Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday is the Thursday before Easter Sunday, the faithful contemplate it as the day of the Last Supper, where Christ washed the feet of his disciples and established the institution of the Eucharist. The night of Maundy Thursday is the night on which Christ was betrayed by Judas in the Garden of Gethsemane. The word Maundy comes from the command mandate when given by Christ at the Last Supper that we should love one another. In the Holy Roman Catholic Church, the anthem Mantedum Novum Dan Do Vobis a new commandment I give to you, would be sung on Maundy Thursday. Roman Catholic Church services today feature a ceremony in which the priest washes the feet of the twelve people to commemorate Christ showing to us he was the servant of God to all of us by washing the feet of his disciples. To the faithful, this can mean the washing of the feet from the forty days and nights we spent with Christ in the wilderness during the penitential season of Lent. It was common in monasteries throughout history for the abbot to wash the feet of the monks in a similar gesture. Some other churches nowadays also have foot washing ceremonies as part of their Maundy Thursday services. In Roman Catholic churches, Maundy Thursday is usually the day on which the supply of anointing oil to be used in ceremonies during the year is consecrated. This is done at a special chrism mass. Now here comes Good Friday. Good Friday is the most important event in Christian history which commemorates the death and crucifixion of Jesus Christ who we believe is the Son of God and whose life and teachings are the foundation of Christianity. Good Friday is a day of mourning in the life of the church. During special Good Friday services the faithful meditate on Christ's suffering and death on the cross and what this means for our salvation. In some countries there are special Good Friday processions or reenactments of the crucifixion. The main service on Good Friday takes place between midday and 3 p.m. In many churches, it takes the form of a meditation based on the seven last words of Jesus on the cross with hymns, prayers, and short sermons. Next, we have Holy Saturday. Holy Saturday is the Saturday after Good Friday. On this day, the Easter Vigil service takes place on the night of Holy Saturday, making it the first ever Easter service. The idea behind the service is for the faithful to wait and watch, being hopeful and confident that Christ will return at midnight. The Easter, or Paschal candle, is lit during this service. The service traditionally begins outside the church, where a minister and some worshippers gather round a fire. A charcoal brazier is common or a bonfire. The readings at the, at the service tell of the creation of humanity, how humanity fell from grace and was repeatedly rescued by God. The readings remind the faithful of God's promise to, the, to be with them always. Hold on a second, 
What's a Paschal candle? Well, a Paschal candle is made of pure white wax and is marked with a cross on an, on an alpha and an omega, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. The four numbers of the year are marked between the arms. This symbolizes that Christ has been and is now and always will be with us in humanity. Paschal candles are usually large and can cost over 100 pounds. For much of the year, many churches stand the Paschal candle near the font used in baptisms. Here it provides a reminder that baptism is a symbolic death and rebirth with Christ, like Christ's death and resurrection. And finally, we get to Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday marks the end of Holy Week and commemorates the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the most important Christian festival and the one celebrated with the greatest joy. The date of Easter changes each year and several other Christian festivals fix their dates by reference to Easter. Churches are filled with flowers and there are special hymns and songs, but unfortunately, not all Easter customs are Christian. Some, such as the Easter Bunny we see in today's society, that, are, that the unbelievers see through the advertising are from a pagan origin. So what can you do to have a memorable Holy Week? I would encourage you to consider how you might make the most of this week. These are some of the most darkest and brightest days in the history of the world and they are rich with soul-sustaining food and life-clarifying vision. In the chaos of our increasingly fast-paced and hectic society, Holy Week is a reminder to pause and ponder, to carefully mark each day and not let this greatest of all weeks fly by us like every other. Perhaps pick a time each day, alone, or with family or housemates. Just slow down and savour what was happening during the Passion Week, some 2,000 years ago. Consider reading through a Holy Week devotional, or even better, one or a couple of the Passion narratives from the Gospels. Matthew chapter 21 to 28, Mark chapter 11 to 16, Luke chapter 19 to 24, and John chapter 12 to 21. Block out several minutes, find a comfortable place to sit, and seek what to quiet your soul, and pray that God will meet you in the, ev in the events and significance of this week, and spend a few moments in prayer after you read, and turn in adoration of Christ. Number two give up. Challenge yourself to live in self-discipline this week. Fast daily or eat only what is absolutely necessary to sustain yourself. Remember all those things you wanted to give up for Lent? Well now it's time to regenerate that commitment. Number three, get up. Rise an hour earlier than usual in the morning. Spend the time in contemplative prayer, spiritual reading or taking a hermetic and meditative walk outdoors. If an hour isn't reasonable because of your circumstances, try 30 minutes. Even 50 minutes is something. 4. Read the four Gospels during Holy Week, just two hours a day. Number 5. Go to daily Mass. Daily Mass during Holy Week every morning. To check for the Mass times for churches close to you at any given time, check masstimes.org. It will be linked in the description. So as we walk through this Holy Week with our Lord, let us take this week to grow in holiness and have the patience and to keep our Lenten promises so that we can all bask in the joy we show when our Lord rises in triumphant glory, conquering death and washing away our sins so that we may go out into the world and proclaim the good news of the risen Christ. This has been Traditionalist Crusader here. Thank you for watching and God bless.